does the no entry fee actually help the anglers? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family. And of course, thank you. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to the members. Thank you to all the people who are interactive on the channel. I really do appreciate it. I have to scratch my nose. I really do appreciate it. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button. And welcome to the team. And let me just say, I would normally do a second take so you didn't see me scratch my nose. So be, that's where we're at now. Farting and burping is allowed. First and foremost, I have to really give a lot of anglers some credit for going into and looking at the numbers of if this no entry fee was going to be good, bad, or horrible for them. It was weird. Yesterday morning, I got up and I thought, well, I'm going to look at the top five anglers. Then I'm going to look at the middle tier, the 50 through 54th angler of the year and then 90 through 94th and write down all of their stats from last year and see where they would be in 2024 and if they had the same results in 2025, what their payouts would be. And of course, I made my spreadsheet, which is three pages, and it is drastic how different the payouts would be. So we're gonna look at the upper, middle, and the lower tier anglers. Also, we have to remember that this doesn't have an effect on us. I know we're very passionate about bass fishing and love some of the guys that are out there. I can honestly say I call a lot of them family when I talk to them or text them. There's certain guys that are just good people. And when I look at this, I look at it not only from a point of making content and knowing as much as I can about professional bass fishing, but also knowing where my friends are at and making sure that they are okay because anglers have families. There's some that don't, but they will at some point in time. And anglers need to look at what's best for themselves and their families first. And I'm not sure if the entry, the no entry fees is really good for anglers right now. We also need to remember that anglers have made most of their money with sponsorships. If you consistently are in making a check, that's a bonus, but Anglers make their money from sponsorships, and we need to remember that also. If they're counting on making X amount of money in tournament checks, it's probably not going to work out for them. So remember, sponsorships is key to the anglers, and if you're winning, the sponsorships are easier. If you're not doing well, the sponsorships are hard to get. Making a check in 2025 is going to be even harder. With the way the payout schedule is, there's a lot of guys that will be fighting for those, those few checks where anglers would get paid up to 70th place. Now it's 40th. And when you look at the AOI pay and also with the classic pay and then the, the tournament payouts, this is as shocking as saying that the, the entry fees are gone. And the entry fees do really help the anglers in the grand scheme of things, but an angler can't have no entry fees and also think that they're going to get the same amount of money for a check every tournament. It's a double-edged sword. You can't have both. And while the tournaments are going to, the tournament, no entry fees are going to help some anglers, but you have to remember that some of these anglers, it doesn't matter if they have entry fees. They put them in their sponsorships. They do all of the stuff and it's in there so that it's not a big deal for them. And that upper tier angler isn't worrying about entry fees because they're doing, they're winning the most money. They're got the best sponsors. They don't worry about it. Where the lower tier angler probably has to worry about a little bit more. We also need to remember that bass is a business, a business. They do not want to be in the red. They want to see the green. They are in business to make money. We need to remember that also. You need to remember that it does cost money to buy time on TV and internet and bandwidth and all the things that Bass does as an organization. Create the content that they put on, on, their, on their website. Create the content that's on YouTube and Instagram and all that. They need to pay people to do that content to keep us entertained. And we don't pay anything for it. It's free for a fan. So while we can critique them 
and say negative or good and bad things about them, we need to remember it's free for us and they are a business and they're trying to sell that business. Now I'll put this on the screen so you can see it, but the first five anglers I picked were Chris Johnson, Trey McKinney, Corey Johnson, Jacob Fouts, and Justin Hamner. Now, if we look at Chris Johnson, last year he made $257,000. If he were to cash this exact same way with no entry fees, next year he would he would make $201,000. That's a there's some gaps here. That's almost a $56,000 decrease in tournament pay. Now, if you take out the $45,000, that he would have paid for entry fees, he's still short about $11,000. Trey McKinney made $259,000. If Trey had the exact same results in 2025, he would make $217,750, which is a $41,000 difference. Now, if you take away the entry fees, you're looking at he's up a little bit. He's one of the few people that are up. If you look at Corey Johnson, $337,000. Next year, if he had the same results, he would make $292,000. That's a $44,000 difference. Jacob Fouts, $143,000. If he got the exact same one, Jacob's one of the guys that really had the drastic difference, he would have made $62,175. That is an $80,000 difference from 2024 to 2025. If you add in that $45,000, Jacob is probably $35,000 in the hole. Now I did all of them and I'll put them on that thing. I did Justin Hamner and then I, and Justin's in that top five. When you get to the 50 to 51s, like you have Seth Fighter, he made $55,000 last year. If he had the exact same results, he would have made $7,500 this year. That is a $47,000 difference. Now, take away that $45,000 that he would have paid, he would have made $2,500. When you look at Bob Downey, who was 51st in Angler of the Year points, he made $62,500. If he had the same results, he made $15,275,000. That is a $47,000 difference. Brock Mosley, $63,000. In 2025, he would have made $19,000. That's a $44,000 difference. Greg DePalma made $57,500. 2025, if he had the same results, $15,375,000. That is a $42,000 difference. And it goes on and on and on. And when you look at these, and when you get down to the bottom five, where you have Cliff Prince, who had was 90th in Angler of the Year points. And remember, Cliff won a tournament, so he would have made $117,500. If he had the exact same results, he would have made seven, he would have made $100,000. So he's down $17,500. Rick Clun in 2024 made $22,500. If he had the same results in 2025, he would have made $4,500. Scott Martin made $25,000 last year. In 2025, if he had the same results, he wouldn't have made one penny. And then last but not least, I'm going to say just Mike Iaconelli. He was in 94th place in Angular of the Year points. He made $22,500. If he had the same results in 2025, he would have made $10,750. So you can take away the entry fees and say it's $45,000 in, in their pocket. You are correct. But last year, they paid $10,000 up to 50th place. So let's just say you made nine caches last year you would have made $90,000. Now you take away your $45,000 for entry fees and you're still profitable $45,000. Now, if you did the same thing this in the upcoming year in 2025, no entry fees, you would collect zero money. Now you had a $45,000 positive in 2024 and your expenses came out to 30 grand. You were still positive $15,000. In 2025, you made no money. You had no entry fees. You still had those expenses. You are in the hole for $30,000. So which one is better? There's pros and cons to each one because when the upper tier anglers, they don't worry about entry fees. The middle tier guys probably will help. This will help a little bit. The lower tier anglers who don't cash much, this is good for them but they all still have expenses. And that was me saying $30,000 was just being 
throwing a number out there because I know I did how much it will cost for bass and the MLF, and I was way off on gas prices. I really was, uh, and especially boat gas prices because I've talked to several anglers that say they probably put in $1,000 at each tournament for gas, and I had given it $400. But, however, is it better to have entry fees or not have entry fees? The numbers kind of don't lie but there are some positives and some negatives to both sides and i can see where having no pay to play is good i think it's where the sport should be getting to the same results and getting those payouts better is now what bass is going to have to do and i don't know if this is sustainable for bass i really don't major league fishing couldn't do it and they were in their, their infancy and new bass has been around for so long that they know everything about what that's going on in the, in the industry they are they make the industry what it is they are the the biggest organization there is but was this too big of a jump to conclusion and hope that this is a patch for all the things that happened last year on the elites because i do think that we're going to see even more pettiness in 2025 because of pay to play i think anglers are going to be even more competitive and try to get away with more things not all but some because they're going to be in the hole for 25 30 grand in expenses and not getting but 500 dollars for 40th place will only cover 4500 dollars in nigh events at the very best so that's why sponsorships are important but i like i said i think next year the competitiveness with the anglers is going to be at an all-time high and i think that if you're not catching them you're really, really in trouble, really in trouble. And you're gonna push yourself to get to that next level and to make five or $10,000. So you have something coming back and that competitiveness can only make things harder for anglers. There you have it. That's my take on this whole thing. I know this is the third video I've done on it and I probably will do more because I've heard from so many anglers. It's not even funny. And I really appreciate the anglers that are putting on stuff on YouTube and stuff like that and telling their side. It's nice to hear them tell the truth. But there's a lot of people that are keeping quiet because Bass doesn't want any negative. And there's a lot of negative to this. And while I think it's unbelievable to go this route, I'm not sure right now that it's sustainable or it's the right thing. But we'll see next year in 2025. I think they have to make some more changes. And I think the changes are going to be cutting people. I think they'll need to, to make the field not as big. And I think they'll have to have some sort of entry fee. Maybe not at the level that they have, but they need to have some money coming in to make the payouts better for the anglers or for more money to be influxed into the anglers' pockets. You tell me what you think. Comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, tight lines, and have a good day.